We have a ton of news from the last few days. Let's go over it all. First, Claude 3.5 Haiku is now here and not without some drama. Now, if you remember, there was an announcement a few weeks ago, Claude 3.5 Sonnet New. And as part of that announcement, we got computer control and we had this announcement that Claude 3.5 Haiku was coming and now it's here. So according to Anthropic, 3.5 Haiku surpasses all previous Claude models except the new 3.5 Sonnet on coding and agentic tasks while being significantly more affordable a fraction of the cost. Here are the SWE Bench verified scores. And I wanna share something with you. I'm actually gonna be interviewing the team behind SWE Bench, so stay tuned for that. But looking back here, here we go, Cloud 3.5 Sonnet new, Cloud 3.5 Haiku, beating even Cloud 3.5 old. You get a 200K context window and a 50% discount with the Batches API. And here's where the drama lies. The price is actually a lot more expensive than people were expecting. And I got ChatGPT's search feature to tell me exactly what was going on with the pricing. The model is priced at a dollar per million input tokens, five dollars per million output tokens, a significant increase from the previous rates of 25 cents and a dollar 25 respectively. Seven times more expensive than GPT-40 Mini and much more costly than Gemini 1.5 Flash. Anthropic justifies the hike by citing the model's enhanced intelligence and performance, stating that during final testing, it surpassed even its previous flagship model. Now, a lot of people called them out for this. And then not only that, on Halloween, they put out a blog post, The Case for Targeted Regulation. I'm not gonna go too deep into that. If you want me to do a deep dive on this, let me know in the comments. But for now, just know it was not well received. So between the model's price and then what a lot of people are calling their aim for regulatory capture, this entire announcement was just not well received. Thanks to the sponsor of this video, Vulture. Reap the benefits of the world's largest independent cloud provider when you bring your GPU workloads over to Vulture. They have the latest NVIDIA GPUs spanning 32 locations across six continents. Vulture delivers industry-leading price to performance and serious accessibility and reliability. Vulture's global, fully composable cloud infrastructure moves your applications closer to your users and frees you from vendor lock-in, allowing you to bring your own network working and database solutions. And if you need to scale beyond just a single cluster, Vulture's Kubernetes engine allows you to take full control over your deployment, offering up a 100% free control plane. So if you're tired of waiting for GPUs from other providers, make sure to use Vulture. You can deploy at any scale immediately, and they have H100s, L40s, and more available right now. And you can get a fraction of a card or fully dedicated bare metal systems, which gives you full control over your hardware and your throughput. They also have one-click installation of all the applications you might need for advanced machine learning workloads, allowing you to get up and running in minutes, not hours. So experience the Vulture difference. Don't get bogged down by severe wait times or limited locations. Try it free today with a $300 credit for your first 30 days when you visit getvulture.com slash Berman. And make sure to use code Berman300 at checkout to get that credit. Thanks again to Vulture for sponsoring this video. Next, we finally know why OpenAI has been delaying their newest products. And the reason? Because they don't have enough compute. Maybe Microsoft is not giving them enough. Maybe they shouldn't depend entirely on Microsoft. We're not really sure exactly what's going on, but Sam Altman made it clear, compute is the bottleneck. And now it makes sense why he wanted to spend $7 trillion trying to build out his own data centers, why it has been rumored that OpenAI is going to create their own chips. A lot of different things need to happen to open up the compute necessary to actually get these next generation models in our hands. Next, we have a new robot. Physical Intelligence has released a new robot and check this robot out. It is made to do your laundry and your dishes and everything in between. So we've seen demos like this in the past, but this just looks incredibly impressive. Check out this robot folding laundry really well, very smooth motions, everything looks really good. And what it actually is, is the model itself, the model that is being used to power the robot. They're not actually selling the robot as far as I can tell. In their blog post, they stated, over the past eight months, we've developed a general purpose robot foundation model 
that we call Pi, Pi Zero. We believe this is the first step toward a long-term goal of developing artificial physical intelligence so that users can simply ask robots to perform any task they want, just like they can ask large language models and chatbot assistants. So the website has a bunch of example videos where you can check out how capable this robot and really the underlying model is. And next, in a huge step towards the future of video games, another huge step, we have Oasis. The company Etched partnered with Descartes AI to create a Minecraft game entirely using diffusion models. So essentially, there's no underlying code, no underlying logic, no game engine, nothing, and it is fully playable right now. Here's an example of what it looks like. Look how cool this is. Obviously, the resolution is very small, but still, it just shows you another glimpse into the future of what content and video games are going to look like. Next, Sam Altman and the OpenAI team, the leadership, did an AMA on Reddit and Chubby put together a bunch of the highlights. So let's take a look at some of them. So first, are you planning to reduce the API cost of advanced voice? We've been reducing the cost of our APIs for two years now. And so it seems like they're going to continue to do that. Then somebody asked about inference cost, specifically in regards to O1 and chain of thought reasoning. And so how fast does OpenAI see inference cost reducing? We expect inference costs to keep going down. If you see the trend over the last year, it's come down like 10X. And my favorite, what do I always say? Bullish on agents. What's the next breakthrough in GPT line of product and what's the expected timeline? Sam Altman, we will have better and better models, but I think the thing that will feel like the next giant breakthrough will be agents. Somebody asked why O1 doesn't support image input. And here we go. The chief product officer says, we focus on getting it out to the world first, first waiting to make it fully featured. Image input is coming in O1. That's great news. And in general, the O series of models will be getting things like multimodality, tool use, et cetera, in the coming months. They are going to be so powerful once they get all of the features that we've become used to with the other frontier models. Somebody asked, what's one thing you wish ChatGPT can do but can't yet? I'd love for it to understand my personal information better and take actions on my behalf. If you've watched this channel at all, that is my dream. I want AI agents to be able to actually accomplish things on my behalf based on my personal information. That is why I also say Apple and Google are incredibly well positioned to still win the AI race because they own the hardware in our pockets and they also really own all of our private data between Gmail, Google Docs, iCloud, everything. So definitely check out the full AMA on Reddit. I'll drop the link in the description below. Next, ChatGPT search came out. I already made a full video of it, but it seems really cool. And it is a competitor to perplexity. You search, it can scrape the internet, and it displays the results based on real-time information. It really is a huge step forward for ChatGPT. Now, I use perplexity all the time. I'm also going to be using ChatGPT all the time. I'll let you know which one I like best. Next, Meta is releasing touch robots, robots that can actually sense touch and feel, it's pretty amazing. And so Meta is giving the ability to robots to actually feel. And this is important. In fact, having all five senses as embodied AI, a robot, is really important for understanding and being able to navigate the world around you. It allows robots to be able to grab things more accurately, to apply the right amount of pressure based on whatever they're touching. For example, if a robot is petting a dog, you don't want it to use its full force. So how would it actually know? It could obviously predict what the right force is, but if it actually had the feedback of touch, it would be able to do so so much more accurately. So really cool, good job, Meta. Next, there was a model that was topping the text-to-image leaderboards, which was called Red Panda, and now we know what it was. It is a company called Recraft, and they released a new text-to-image model. Here are some of these examples, and they really look absolutely incredible. Here's a Breaking Bad cake, an alien taking a selfie. Here's another one. As I always say, more competition, better. Let's get more text-to-image models, text-to-video models, large language models. I can't get enough of them. Congrats to Recraft. All right, next, here's a story that blew me away and I think went under the radar. It turns out 
25% of the code being written by Google engineers now is written by AI. That is a huge increase in productivity of the engineering organization that is Google. Sundar Pichai, the CEO of Google, said it in an earnings call, more than 25% of all new code at Google is now generated by AI. Now, a Google engineer actually clarified what that means. Now, yes, AI is writing a lot of code, but it's not writing end-to-end -end code yet. What he said it's actually doing is more like tab completion. So you start and you can architect a piece of code and it will help you complete that code. Now that is still amazing and increases productivity greatly, but it's not quite end-to-end -end code generation by AI. Again, I still see the future of code being completely AI generated. And what this just means is that a single engineer will just be that much more efficient and that much more productive. Next, in a minor update, ChatGPT now lets you search through your chat history. So if you have thousands of different chats with ChatGPT, now it's easy to find the one you're looking for. Now, what I think might actually be cool is being able to chat with your chat history, but maybe that's getting too meta. So a nice little quality of life update there. So that's it for today. If you enjoyed this video, please consider giving a like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.